Uh, okay, it's nine o'clock. It is time for a new lesson today, carrying on from the last lesson where we talked about current and resistance. Today we're doing potential difference and resistance. Um, and we're going to be able to describe how potential difference voltage can provide the energy for a circuit. Uh, to start us off, we're going to look at some things from the previous couple of lessons. What device do you use to measure current? What is current measured in? What letter do you use to denote current? Current is a flow of. And what equation do you know that has current in it? A very current heavy starter. So take a moment, pause, answer the questions, and then we start the video. Let's check whether you've got them correct. Okay, go, pause. Have you done it? I hope so. Let me, what's the thing gone? Pen, pen. Uh, what device do you use to measure current? You use an, oh, that pen didn't work. Let's try again. Pen. Hmm. The pen is not working. Well, it says it's a pen, right? No. I'm afraid I'll just have to talk about it. Okay, what device do you use to measure current? You use an ammeter, A-M-M-E-T-E-R. An ammeter is the device you use to measure current. And what does it measure current in? It measures current in amps or amperes. What letter do you use to denote current? Tricky, it's not tricky, I'm not trying to catch you out. If you're writing, you wanna write about current in an equation, you use the letter I. If you're A, for what it's measured in amps, is used at A, but um, you use the letter I to kind of say, I'm measuring current, I just put I in the table. Now, what letter is, uh, sorry, current is a flow of what? Two answers, please. Uh, current is a flow of, you can say charge, so it can be charged particles and ions or electrons or something like that, or you could just say electrons. Um, so uh, you be more specific. Normally, it's a flow of electrons. Um, uh, what equation do you know that has current in it? And the equation is, can I do this, this one? Oh, there's a pen here. Let's see if this one works. Not really thin. Uh, the equation is Q equals I T. No, nothing's working today. That is a shame. Um, uh, so Q equals I T is the equation. Okay, so uh, I think we reviewed this before, but potential difference. It's a measure of the difference in electrical potential energy between two points in a circuit. Potential difference is also called voltage. You use voltage. You normally people would normally talk about what's the voltage in this. Uh, the correct term in the circuit would be to talk about the potential difference, uh, not the voltage. Is potential difference, and it's measured in volts. That's why people would normally say potential difference. Um, as normally say, volts or voltage is measured in that. So it's like saying, um, what's the degrees when you're asking about the temperature? You say, what's the temperature? And you give the answer in degrees. You wouldn't say, what's the degrees? And they give the answer in degrees. You say, what's the temperature? So the correct term is, what's the potential difference? The answer is, it's 12 volts. Um, it's called potential difference because it has to be measured at two different points in the circuit. Here we have a little diagram of how you put the voltmeter into the circuit. So you measure the potential difference with a voltmeter and uh, you must put the voltmeter across two different points. So this voltmeter is going to measure the voltage here and the voltage, oh, this pen isn't working, the voltage here and the voltage here. So across two different points in the circuit. And um, if um, you put the voltmeter in a circuit in parallel, it will read the potential difference uh, across two places across a thing. If you put a voltmeter in series, the circuit won't work. So you have to put the potential, the sorry, you have to put the voltmeter in parallel because it has to go across, it has to have two different places to read from. If you put it in series, it doesn't work quite the same way. So a potential difference uh, must be measured across two places and it's measured in volts in a voltmeter. Uh, one volt is the same as one joule of energy per coulomb, which actually gives us another equation. Uh, and another equation uh, is this equation. Um, the potential difference is how much energy is put in per coulomb. And so E is for energy, uh, V is potential difference, and Q is charge. We did that last lesson, or two lessons ago. So the one with the equation Q equals IT. Um, so if you do uh, that, uh, you can 
Um, uh, if you know the energy and the charge, you can work out the voltage. Rearranged, uh, E is QV. Uh, so the energy is the charge times the voltage. That's something to write down. Write it down. Away. Okay, so reviewing what we did before, uh, remember, uh, we have resistance. Okay, resistance is how much uh, material tries to slow down or resist to stop those electrons traveling. And you can see from this little uh, animation, we have the orange dots are the copper atoms, so that's what the wire is made from, and the black dots are the electrons. And instead of them being able to travel along the wire and everything's fine, uh, they're bumping into these atoms, and that is slowing them down. And that's slowing them down, so that's giving them a resistance. And we noted that if you put a resistor into a circuit, it slows or reduces the current, okay? So we did that last lesson. A resistor in a circuit slows the current down. And that's because, if you remember rightly uh, from before, you have those uh, electrons traveling along the wire. They travel along the wire like this. And it's like a queue. If the one at the front goes slow, everyone behind has to go slow as well. The one in the middle goes slow, everyone behind goes slow. So, you know, you're always going to move at the slowest rate. So if you put a resistor in the wire, uh, all the electrons slow down. And that was last time. So if you put more resistance into a wire, it reduces um, the um, flow of the current. But also, today we're now looking at what happens to the energy of those electrons, because those electrons need energy to go on the circuit. Um, so we have a little nice diagram borrowed from boardworks thanks boardworks um and this is showing here we have another example of the electrons traveling around the circuit the electrons of the blue little people and uh, as they go around a the circuit there are different obstacles that they go through and some obstacles are more complicated than others uh, so as you can see this is a circuit so they're all going around like in one loop so if they all slow down so if say this dude here slows down all these guys behind will have to slow down too because they're stuck in the circuit. And then what happens is, as a consequence, everyone slows down. So we know obstacles will affect the, affect the flow of the current. But this picture also has something else in it that's really handy. It shows these different obstacles. Now, some are easier than others. So this one here, just walking on a bit of floor that's a little bit higher, that's not gonna require a huge amount of energy. Whereas here, down the bottom, we have swimming through a treacle bit. I don't know how many of you have swum through a treacle bit. I haven't, but I would imagine it's quite hard. It will use a lot of energy. If you're an electron, you'll probably have to use more energy in that treacle bit than you will walking across that bridge there. So the treacle bit uses more energy than going through the bridge. If you have a certain amount of energy to go around the circuit, you're going to put more of it into getting through the treacle bit than you are in another obstacle. If you use all of your energy in the treacle bit, then you might not make it out the other side. So if you're going through a resistance, it requires more energy to get the electron through. Larger resistance require more potential to get the charge to flow through the circuit. That should say to flow through the circuit. And I put this little fit thing here to remind me uh, to, uh, let's look at this, uh, to go and have a look at this animation. So uh, this is the FET website. This website is amazing. Uh, and they allow you to make circuits when you don't have the stuff at home. So here we have a nice, simple circuit. Uh, I have a cell. This is quite a large cell. It's a 10 volt cell. In series, I have an ammeter. And at the bottom, I have two voltmeters, one and two. Uh, these voltmeters are the same. This one says 10. And this one says 10. The other way you'd be able to tell is because the pattern and colors are exactly the same. They have the same color pattern, so they're the same. And this is a voltmeter. And if you remember, you put a voltmeter in parallel. So let me just connect the voltmeter up. Oh, oh come on. And so there we go. That voltmeter is reading five volts. Now, what you'll notice is if I move this voltmeter across here, it's now reading across two. So if this battery is giving 10 volts to the circuit, uh, five volts are being used up in here and five volts are being used up in this one. So they each take an equal amount of the voltage. So the electrons use a um, 
share of the energy they get from the battery. The battery gives them the energy, uh, the joules per coulomb, gives them the energy to go around the circuit like this. <clears throat> and then they use their energy in the resistors. So the wires are fairly easy and they use their energy in the resistors. Oops, sorry. Uh, they use their energy in the resistors and so they've got no energy as they finish to do the obstacles and they come back out the other side like this. Boink and boink. Um, so simple. Um, but what happens if I make one obstacle harder? If I click on this and I make it 20. So this obstacle is 20 ohms and this obstacle is 10. Because this one is harder, you end up getting more voltage. So this is 6.67 and this one, still 10 for the both of them. This one is only three. So actually, if this one is twice as much resistance, it uses twice the amount of voltage to get through. And if you think about it like an obstacle, if you have to do an obstacle, that's really hard. You'll use more energy getting through the obstacle than you will getting through an obstacle that's not that difficult. And the same for the electrons. Um, if the obstacle's trickier, if the obstacle's trickier, they'll use more of their energy. If the obstacle's easier, they use less energy. But they're obviously, they can only use as much energy as they have. They were given 10 volts by the battery or the cell, and they use half. So you use, was it 3.3 in here and 6.66 in here. So um, if you have a more, if you have a higher resistance, uh, you have to use more energy. So the larger circuit requires more potential to, different, to get the charge to flow through the circuit. Apologies about that. That was poorly organized by myself. Uh, and there we go. So larger resistance requires more potential difference to get the charge to flow through the circuit. Okay, there's going to be a little experiment thing now. So I would suggest you write down one of those tables. They're all the same. Pick one, copy it down into your book, use a pen, solve, uh, and write it down. You're going to take some readings in a second. So write down that for me, please. Pause, copy, unpause when you're done. Go. Check. Okay, so here we go. Here we have a nice simple circuit. The first thing actually I'd like to do, uh, I've just made you copy a circuit down. Can you convert that into a circuit diagram? So here's what it would look like. We have these things at school, crocodile clips and batteries and the variable resistors and the ammeter and the voltmeter. How would you draw that as a circuit? Hmm. Pause, draw the circuit, unpause. Good. Right, I'm just going to put a resistor in, a fixed resistor. Okay, so uh, what happens, let's start why is this not on? Do a switch. Ah, here we go. It's going the wrong way. Uh, so first of all, uh, first version, you write down the voltage, 0 0.5 volts. You write that in the column that says V. Current, 0 0.6 amps. You write that in the column that says I. R will calculate in a moment. Next one, you write 1.0 in the V column. 1.1 in the A column, underneath the previous ones. One point five in the voltage, one point eight in the current. It's I. Two in the B, two point five in the A. Two point five in the B, three in the A. 3 in the B, 3.5 in the A, and 3.5 in the B, and 4.2 in the A. Now, I'll leave this PowerPoint for you on the BLE. If you'd like to do this yourself, you can try it with some of the other things, the diode, the bulb, the copper wire, the other wires, but I'm going to look at those in another lesson, so it's not as important. But hopefully you've got a series of results. Now, if I was going to ask you to draw a graph, um, uh, we would see a relationship between the voltage and current. I'm not going to get you to draw a graph today, uh, but if we were at school, we would be doing that. Let me flip on to the next one. Okay, so if you plot a graph 
for uh, those results that you've just got, you should hopefully see something like that. Uh, and if we join them up with a line of best fit, we get a lovely line of best fit. Uh, you might describe those lines. Uh, how, how might you describe it? Come on. Yeah, they're, they're proportional. You can even say they're directly proportional because they go through zero. There's a positive correlation. It basically says if the voltage, the potential difference increases, the current also increases. Easy. If the potential difference increases, the current increases. And that makes sense. If you push the electrons, that's what the potential difference is. That's the energy in the circuit. If you push those electrons, the current increases. More electrons flow around the circuit. It makes perfect sense. If you put more push, more potential difference in, more electrons will travel around the circuit, meaning there's more current. Uh, and this uh, ends up being a science law. This is Ohm's law, George Ohm. He, he noticed that the current flowing through a wire is proportional to the potential difference across it, provided the temperature remains constant. The temperature isn't constant, but Ohm's law doesn't fit. So if you were to see a graph that looks like this, potential difference and current, and then it's a straight line, no, it obeys Ohm's law. If it's not a straight line, it doesn't obey Ohm's law. Can I suggest again, I'm going to pause the video, you sketch the graph and make that note. Once you've finished, on pause. So pause, sketch the graph, make the note. Go. Okay, brilliant. If you were to do this for something else, like a, with a bigger resistor, if you do it with a bigger resistor or with different wires, uh, you should get the same thing. If they, these devices follow Ohm's law, uh, something with a um, lower resistance has a steeper gradient. Something with a higher resistance has a shallower gradient. This one says, this copper one says, I only need half the amount of volts to get a lot of current. Whereas this micro says I need almost all the volts and I'm not even getting to the same current as the copper. So a shallower gradient means a higher resistance. A shallow gradient means a higher resistance. A steeper gradient means a lower resistance. This one says, because this, this only goes halfway up this x-axis, so I only need half the, the voltage, and I've got like maximum current. Whereas this one, I've got to maximum voltage, and I haven't even reached the same high current as the other one. Steeper the gradient, the lower the resistance. Another note, maybe. Uh, so look at these. Which of these obey Ohm's law? Hopefully you remember from the first thing. If it's a straight line, we know it obeys Ohm's law. So this first one, yep, yeah, it obeys Ohm's law. The second one, it doesn't. And the third one, it does obey Ohm's law. So well, we're at the questions now. So ah, the other thing I haven't told you to do. Excuse me. Let's go back to this. This. I'd like you to work out. The resistance. The resistance. Let me see if I can get this pen to work. No, the resistance is not happening. The equation for resistance is V equals IR. So voltage divided by current equals resistance. So if you do this value for V, this value for V divided by this value for I, you get a value for R. So you do those things. V I, R, and then you can work out the resistances. Hopefully, it should stay the same. And this was the experiment. The questions at the back are asking you about the experiment. Look at this. Look at all of these things. Um, every time I put a new device in, look, I kept the same battery, I kept the same resistor, I kept the same ammeter. I'm changing the settings on the resistor to change the amount of uh, voltage that goes through that device, but um, I'm keeping all the other things the same. So let's have a look at some of these questions. State two quantities that you need to measure to find the resistance of a wire. Finding the resistance of the wire, what are the two things you need to measure? Hint, I just mentioned it. State the measuring instruments you need to measure these things. Go back, look at that diagram. What is it? What are the two instruments that have the numbers on? What's the equation you use to calculate resistance? Look back in your book. 
got back a few seconds in the video I just talked about it. The student carries out an investigation into the effect of a wire's material on its resistance. We looked at those graphs a second ago. She tests three wires. They're all the same length of 100 centimetres. They have the same diameter of 0.23 millimetres. They are made of different materials. One's constantin, one's copper, and the other one's nichrome, which are constantin and nichrome are both alloys. What's the independent variable in that experiment? What you change is independent. What are you changing? What's the dependent variable in this? What are you looking at? What's the thing you're measuring? What are the two control variables in that experiment? What things do you keep exactly the same when you're doing that experiment to make sure it's a fair test, okay? All right, giving you loads of information there, throwing stuff at you, but I believe in you. So answer those questions, write them down in your book, take a photo and send them to your teacher. Uh, if you have any questions, ask me, I'll leave a comment. Okay, love